Hey everyone, welcome to the next video segment focusing on the digestive system of avians. And avian means bird. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the different parts of the avian digestive system. And then, like I said, in the next video, we're going to compare this to the ruminant digestive system because they're both very different. So for the mouth, avians actually don't have teeth. Okay, they're very, their mouth is very rigid and attached to the tongue and poorly developed salivary glands. Salivary glands means spit or saliva. The mouth is also home to the beak, which is adapted for rapidly picking up small particles. And saliva contains salivary um, amylase. Okay, and amylase breaks things down. You should learn a little bit more about that in biology class. Then we have our crop. Our crop is an enlarged area within the esophagus, and the functions include serving as an ingesta holding and moistening reservoir. So that's where we're going to hold, um, some people call it a bolus, but we're going to hold what we've ingested for a little while. It allows for further breakdown reaction by a salivary amylase, and then some microbial activity so that fermentation occurs. And that's in some avian species, not all. Then we have our proventiculus. This is the glandular secretor or secretory site and has a pH of 4, which 4 is very acidic. Okay? It is the site of gastric juice production. This is hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Ingestia passage is rapid. It happens in about 14 seconds or less. So we move our bolus and our, um, our ingestia very fast through the proventriculus. Okay? Then we have the gizzard, and gizzard is my favorite part of the avian digestive system. My love for the gizzard stems from a line in the Grinch, and you may or may not know it if you've seen the Grinch, but at the very end of the movie, movie, the Grinch goes, who wants the gizzard? And then some guy says, I do. And then the Grinch says, too late, that would be mine. I don't know, I just think it's kind of a random line. And I like the gizzard, so. The gizzard is a thick muscular walled area acting to physically reduce the particle size of ingestia. This is similar to mastication within mammals. And this occurs by mixing and grinding. So those larger particles are gonna get ground down into smaller particles that are better able to be digested and processed by the avian or the bird. It contains grit. Grit is small stones or hard particles, and those aid in the grinding of ingested seeds and grains. No secretion of enzymes happens in the gizzard, but hydrochloric acid and pepsin from the proventriculus work within the gizzard to help that break down. Then we have the small intestine. The pH of the small intestine is slightly acidic. So again, acidic is less than seven. Absorption is similar to the mammals. Most enzymes found in the mammals um, are present within the avian small intestine as well. So you can kind of see we've been following along. We started off at the crop, we went to the proventriculus and the gizzard, and now we're down in our small intestine over here. Then we have the end, cecha and large intestine. The cecha and large intestine are sites of water uh, resorption, okay? Avian GIT, or gastrointestinal tract, that's what GIT stands for, contains two blind pouches, or cecha, compared with only one in mammals, and that's called the cecum. The colon is two to four inches and empties into the cloaca, where fecal material will exit through the vent or the anus. Okay? Feces and urine are excreted or left the body together. Birds produce what is known as uric acid, while mammals produce urea. Urine is dumped into the lower large intestine and it moves back to the cecum for water resorption. Then our fecal matter passes out of the tract via the cloaca. Okay, so a lot of things exit from the cloaca. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the class when we go more in depth with the avian reproduction. And that'll be happening probably in about a month or so. But we'll talk a little bit more about the cloaca and how that plays a huge role in the avian tracts. So I have a brain break here that you can watch on Google Classroom if you would like, but we are not going to stream it right now. And we are going to stop there. So hopefully you have learned a little bit more about the avian digestive tract. We're going to move into ruminants next. Thank you.